I'm Dr. Yvonne Marie Laria. I am an associate professor at IUS Indiana University South Bend, department chair for the Counseling and Human Services program. I am also the founding president of GC Scored, a nonprofit organization that's based here locally, but we work globally. Um, to my left, your right, is my handsome husband. Indeed, Indeed. Irwin Laria. <laughs> and um, my intern, my IUSB counseling intern, Gladys Demowa, and she's here to help me. And then we have Roselli Vaz. She is a social work intern that I have from Andrews University. So if you can quickly just introduce yourselves, just say your name, where you're from. My name is Jane, and I'm originally from Reading, Pennsylvania. <laughs> OK, good to have you. Um, South Bend. I'm sorry, Barron Springs, Andrews. Okay, yes. okay, good. Marsha, I'm a member of Grace Grace. Okay. I'm a member of the church. Okay. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Thank you for coming to our session today. So, what we're going to be talking about today is cultivating generational social emotional wellness in your home. So, you have a bag that has, you're going to be planting. We're going to be doing some actual planting. Okay, you see a cup in there. Um, we have soil outside. We're going to do some planting right out on the, on the uh, tables out there. But before we get to that, we are going to talk some about what you have in your packet, but also the, the foundation of this presentation. You see this quote here, it says, the ruin of a nation begins in the homes of its people. That's a, that's a proverb or, or a quote from a Ghanaian, um, from Ghana. Um, the ruin of a nation begins in the homes of its people. So if we see a nation in ruin, it didn't start in the White House. It, didn't, it started where? In the homes, okay? And today we're gonna talk about how we can cultivate homes that do uh, encourage social emotional wellness, all right? So generation to generation, what did you learn, okay? And I want you to talk back to me. What did you learn that was helpful or harmful from your parents? What did you learn? Keith, what did you learn that was helpful or harmful to your parents? I didn't just ask your names because I wanted to know. I asked your names so I can call on you guys. Yeah, <laughs> I, I grew up in a large family, mm -hmm. four boys, four girls, mother and father, 10 of us, mm -hmm. in a two-bedroom house. So almost everything had to be shared. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the positives that I took away from that mm -hmm. is, is um, a very sharing environment okay so that was something helpful uh, do you have children yes are you teaching your children the same thing uh, basically mm -hmm. okay all right anybody else what did you learn from your parents tell me your name again oh so you can call on me yes <laughs> <laughs> judith. judith judith yes what did you learn from your parents, Judith? I'd say nurturing. Nurturing, okay. Did anybody learn anything bad from their parents? Bad. Bad, harmful. Yeah, my, they used to lie, little lies, you mm -hmm. know, or anything. They were not, they were not Christians. Mm -hmm. They had this habit. Yeah, so you, that's something you, you learned. Are you, what are, you, are you teaching your kids that, or are you teaching them the opposite? No, the opposite. Good. Okay, anything else that, okay, yes? Um, where I grew up from, yelling was part of <laughs> Yelling, yeah, yeah. So okay. <laughs> and do you, do you do that now with your children? No, no, I don't. Oh, okay. I, I used to. You used to. Okay. Jane? Well, I didn't grow up with my parents because they didn't want me. And mm. um, I grew up with my maternal grandmother. And she told me almost every day that my mother was a big disgrace because of my father. Mm. And all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Every time I did 
did something she didn't like, she's like, you're going to be just like your mother. Wow. Yes. So that, did you, did you have, you, you don't have children? No. Yeah. Okay. But do you have people, a younger generation that you pass anything on to? Because I have some nieces mm -hmm. um, that I kept in touch with as they grew up and now they have children. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, birthdays and all that kind of stuff, Stuff's I just mostly gave them money because I, I was never living anywhere near them. I never really got to know them very mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I passed on the elite uh, or the obsolete computers uh -huh. one year to the next, next. To, to, to them so they would learn that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, many of us are not even aware of what we're passing on to the next generation. The reason we're not aware is because we haven't taken the time to know what was passed down to us. Okay. Many of us don't even are not aware because all our interactions that we have with in with our children is information that's being passed on. Their practices, there's attitudes, mindsets, um, behaviors, we're all pa we're passing it down. Whether you're conscious of it or not, it is being transmitted. And there's this saying that goes, if you don't, if you don't transform, you will transmit. Okay? All right, so let's do a little activity. Everybody has a phone. Pull, pull out your phone. Get your phone out. Get your phone out. Get your phone. Where's your phone? <laughs> you have your, okay. So I want you to text 22333. Three, three. Two, two, three, three, three. Then Yvonne, L A R R I E, eight, five, four. Uh, to you? Yeah, so put this in the text box and then. Type in the yeah. Type this. Type this in the message. So this is go where the phone number goes, and this will go where the message goes. Okay. So stop up to. Stop up to here. Okay. Stop right here. Y V O N N E L A R R I E eight five four. You guys got it? Send. It's no charges. No charges. <laughs> good question, Paul. That's a good question. All right, everybody good? You ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're going to answer yes or no. Have you heard this statement? It's a generational curse. Have you heard it? Have you, if you heard it, say, click, hit yes. Hit A or B. Hit A or B. Why is it not coming up? Yeah. Why is it? It's not showing up. So A is yes and B for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know activate Ugh. okay everybody got that so a is yes b is no did you uh-huh just put a and send it a or or b and send yeah Why did this not show up? It's showing up here. Is it because it's not? It's, it's probably because it's the configuration. No, it did. It showed up yesterday. Right. Next question. It's, it's showing up here and not up here. Right. So the way we came, it's a technology. 
No, I wanted to see the responses. Okay, the next question. Do you say it runs in my family? Yes or no? A for yes, B for no. Could you make it extended? I want this to show up here. You got it? Do you say this? It's not their fault. They got it honestly. Yes, A, B. No. Do you know what I'm saying? What does that say? It's not their fault. They got it honestly. They didn't. They just got it from their parents. Mm. They learned it from their parents. Um, could you, you know, how you extend the whatever you're seeing on the. It is on extend. Mm. Oh, why? Is it showing up? Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, now we're stuck. Oh, my gosh. It's always have technical difficulties. No, not working. You need to drag it down. I guess we had a so co copy and activate. Hit activate to me. Let me see. Okay, we'll just come back and show that. What is going on? Oh. <laughs> so hold on, guys. Bear with the technical challenges. There we go. Okay. All right. I was told God should always be number one in your life. So, true A, B. Right, that's what I wanted. <laughs> okay. Ready to move on? Can I just ask a quick question? Uh -huh. so As either one. Where, where have you heard it? Have you heard it? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So we have there. I was told don't air your dirty laundry. Or, or another way that is said, what happens in this house stays in this house. Okay. If you've heard it, if so, if you were told that, or if you heard it, okay. we'll get to the practicing. <laughs> okay. I was told respect your elders, whether or not they were family members. Okay. I was told never say you can't, always say I'll try. Huh? I know quitting goes even though. Yeah. Trying sounds like lying. Oh, that's an interesting one. I was compared to my brother or sister. Why can't you be like your brother or sister? Oh. Hmm. 
Okay. I was told you can achieve anything. Okay. I was told showing emotion is a sign of weakness. <laughs> I was told if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. I was told, don't bring shame on your family name. OK, I think this is the last one. I was told, giving back to others, being of service to humanity is a good character trait to have. Okay, so some of the things that we were told, okay, you can type in leave now to end. You can type in leave. And hit send. And then you will leave, you'll get a message saying, yeah. <laughs> you have left. All right, was that fun? Mm -hmm. Did you guys like? Mm -hmm. This is my first time using this. I like it. I like it, yeah. <laughs> so um, it gets you involved and I, it gets you thinking. And I sent this to I some. It's 100%. <laughs> yeah. And so. Um, how does this get passed down? How do these, you know, get passed down? What are some ways that these are mindsets, right? All of the things we just talked about were mindsets. And we know part of the, the explanation of what uh, generational factors are is mindsets that get passed down mindsets and practices, um, even emotions. You know, my husband tells a story about when he was in his mother's womb, his mom was very fearful all the time. And he is very fearful, even today. You know, um, is that wasn't a genetic factor. It was an attitudinal mindset, and then the home environment was something that fostered a lot of fear and anxiety, right? So, so when you hear people say it runs in the family, it's not a genetic, pre you're not genetically predisposed. You're more environmentally predisposed because the environment is what is fostering, right? So if your mom had a fearful or anxious mindset, her behaviors, the language she uses, is going to foster that. And so you then are going to li start living fearfully, anxiously, and that's how information gets passed on. That's how traditions and, and attitudes and mindsets and behaviors get passed on. So from generation to generation, and so I looked in the Bible, and I, found, I looked for generational scripture, scripture that talked about generation. And here are some really interesting ones, and how th even from back then, they understood 
the Bible writers, the people living in back in the Bible times, they were people, they were real people like you and I. Um, how they saw the importance of generation to generation. So in Psalm 145.4, it says, each generation will announce to the next your wonderful and powerful deeds. How are you announcing? How are you sharing or broadcasting to your children, to their children? How did your parents or grandparents or caretakers announce to your generation the wonderful things that their family has accomplished. Or we can look at it from the, this is talking about God, right? But let's, let's, look, let's transfer that to how did your family talk about what has happened in, their, in your family history? Why is that important? Why is it important for, for announcements on about wonderful and powerful actions or deeds or exploits? Why is that important for your generation and for the next generation? Somebody, quickly. It sets a standard. It sets a standard, right? One of the things in my family we talk about, we say, uh, your name is your honor. So you need, when, when you put your name on something, it needs to have, it needs to be honorable, right? So when people hear Yvonne Murray or Yvonne Laria, they need to know, okay, that person has integrity. That person has, you know, whatever. But how are you announcing? How are you announcing your wonderful deeds? That's the next scripture is, these words that I have, I'm giving you today are to be in your heart. Tell them, and in the Bible, heart is trans, sometimes translated as your mind, okay? Are to be in the words I'm giving you today are to be in your heart. Tell them to your children over and over again. Talk about them all the time, whether you're at home, walking along the road, driving in your vehicle, going to bed at night, or getting up in the morning, Deuteronomy 6, 6 or 7. I added driving your vehicle. That wasn't in the Bible. <laughs> but I figure if it was written today, that would be in there. Your mindset, your attitudes, your behaviors, your emotions. How are we, are we talking about them and are we talking positively? Are we, you know, dead downers, always talking negatively? What's in your heart? Are you telling your children negative stuff over and over? Like Jane shared earlier, what her grandmother used to say. Anybody has any other experiences that sh things were shared that were not positive, but also things that were shared that was um, positive, right? Because we, what, what happens to the human mind is that we remember the negative more than the positive. So be careful what you say, but first of all, be careful what's in your heart, in your mind. Manage your thoughts, okay? Proverbs 4.23 says, um, what's that text, my favorite? I sent it to some people this week. <laughs> um, Paul, I saw your hand. I'm looking for it here. Go ahead. Uh, back to like the bad things though. I mean, you can tell the bad things, but you can also say it's a good thing too to say because you can also learn from the bad things. You can. Because say you can like live in a bad place, but you can still out come in right, rightfully like sound and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You learn from all those bad things. You learn from everything, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, you but can. You can Right. And usually children are not able to be so discerning. And so as the adults, we have to set that example for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was the text again I said? Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Exactly. Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. It starts here, guys. 
what passes down from generation to generation starts in the mind of all of us. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Sometimes the bad things haunt you. I'm sorry. Sometimes the bad things haunt you to get, get some people to try harder. It depends on that emotional status of that individual because everybody's different. Everybody has their own temple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have five kids and I've caught myself saying something negative about me mm -hmm. not realizing that they were picking up on it mm -hmm. until I heard one of my daughters repeat it to herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think being mindful of not being negative towards yourself. Absolutely. It's really important. It's absolutely. You're right. If Women. I tell her she's beautiful all day. But if you keep me, saying, I don't think I'm beautiful, or if I, I, oh, I'm overweight, or I don't like my skin color, or I don't like my hair, all of those things, they pick up. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, again, talk about the positive things. Right? Let's go to speak to the Israelites, some more scriptures. Speak to the Israelites and tell them, for generations to come, they must sew tassels onto the bottom edge of your clothes and tie a blue string to each tassel. Fashion. Fashion being passed down. What, how did you learn fashion? How did you learn to dress? I, I'm going to use my husband again. <laughs> uh, his father was a dresser. As in the, in the Caribbean, we would say he was a saga boy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, always, I, his clothes was precise, shoes, everything. And my husband is exactly that way. Even though my husband, he doesn't really like his dad, <laughs> right? Because they had some, you know, they had some difficult times growing up. Um, but he picked that up. His dad, did your father ever teach you to, no? Again, right? Just by observing environmental. So think, so when you hear people say, oh, um, this runs in my family. They like to use that, especially when it comes to physical health. Even physical health is not, a lot of it is not genetic. It's environmental. Yes, yes. Did you have your hand up? No, so I'm just wondering because, for example, I come from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And in Brazil, most parents do not talk with the, the children mm -hmm. about how to do with the money, mm -hmm. uh, relationships, mm -hmm. sex, mm -hmm. and spirituality, Right. I, I should say. For example, I, I have never been talked about those things deeply, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have been raised as a Catholic, mm -hmm. so it has been good for me because I've been able now to... Now I'm an Adventist, but I have been able to, to value the spirituality. Right. The you know, right. My family. Right. But the other things, were, that were, a thing that, that stayed in my mind is that when you, when you don't have your parents teaching you these things, mm -hmm. you will grab some, somewhere else. Exactly. Exactly. Very good point. You gravitate and you learn from other people. Yeah, and and it may... Exactly. The dirt, the dirt side of the mm. things. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Good. I think the one thing that I, I um, figured out when I was a kid was my reputation meant everything. Mm. And so I had to guard my reputation no matter what I did. Mm -hmm. So I've never been a, at a loss for a job. I've never been unemployed mm -hmm. because I had a good reputation. Deja. And I've been investigated so many times, you know, it's mm. like they can't find anything. So it's like... Yeah, that's so the, that's the answer. And so that's I she took my my fashion from my best friend because uh -huh. you know, I admired her her parents mm -hmm. and their home mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and so I can see that yeah. in my own taste. As yeah, well. exactly. So even even fashion. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, Gladys. I just wanted to comment on what he said. Uh huh. You know, culture also plays a big role. Yes. You know, like Say that louder so he can pick up that under. Yeah. <laughs> Culture. Yeah, she culture. said culture plays a big role. Yeah. Um, for myself, you see, my husband being gone. Mm -hmm. I have a 14 year old. Mm -hmm. He came to me asking me some questions. I'm like, how am I yeah. going to How are you going to answer? Yeah. Yeah. But I had to because I realized, you see, the dad is not here. Mm -hmm. If I keep quiet, he will go somewhere else and find out that information. Mm -hmm. so it's something that we have to. Yeah. yeah I'm learning. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's good. And it's important to be open to learning. Right. As we grow. And that's why they have this these kinds of workshops so that people can grow and learn. What else? Yes, Owen. I just want to say, you know. 
I have, so I worked with students for quite a long time who didn't have what I consider like, you know, the kind of example, dressing, speaking, doing, being. And I met one of them. This is the last, the, the, the last time I saw them, they were graduating. And I met them, they're now 25 years old. And this one of them said to me, a girl lady, well, a young lady now, he said, Mr. Larrier, I never forget what you said when you did this because I don't allow anyone to come at me like this. I never knew the role, I never, th I didn't think anything about what I was doing or the image I projected or how I was. She didn't have a father at home, but that, but her mother did great with her. But it's just how they're, it's almost like osmosis. We don't even know what we're, what we're giving. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, and it's important. Thank you. That's a good point. We have to always remember we are always, we are always influencing something, someone, and guess what? Other people and other stimuli or other factors are influencing us always, even at the same time. So these things are happening simultaneously. And so it's important to live consciously. It's important to live consciously, not anxiously, but consciously and intentionally, because you're always influencing and always being influenced. Okay? All right, so let's go to the next scripture. Think of the past, of the time long ago. Ask your parents to tell you what happened. Ask the old people to tell you of the past. Deuteronomy 32, 7. Think of the past, of the time long ago. Uh, what happened? What happened why we, you know, ended up having 10 children? Or what happened why you ended up being an only child? What happened why you ended up, what happened why you ended up being adopted? What happened? We need to find these things out. Why, who can tell me why you think that's important from somebody? I see Dr. Nicely. Good to have you. Yes. What, what, what can we... Why is it important to know what happened? So the past is repeated. Brilliant. Say that louder. So the past is repeated. So the past is not repeated, especially if the past was negative. Yes. You were going to say something. I would, I would say the same, same thing, thing. Mm -hmm. that we have these patterns of behavior, of, of thinking mm -hmm. that we receive from past generations mm -hmm. that are not sometimes conscious. You will not. But when, when we start to attend lectures like this or, I don't know, going to the church, mm -hmm. doing things that raise our, our awareness oh, right. about these things, mm -hmm. we have now to break some old patterns. Yes. It's not easy. You know? It's not easy. It's like we start to to look at yourself in the mirror, mm -hmm. now you start to see the bad things mm -hmm. that even your parents didn't correct mm -hmm. in themselves. Yeah. Well, at yeah. some point, I think you have to be responsible for your own life and your own future mm -hmm. and your children. Mm -hmm. And by curbing the generational curses and breaking them, mm -hmm. you can start new patterns. Mm -hmm. like right. us, in my family, my family was very messed up. Mm -hmm. We were all over the place. Mm -hmm. Broken homes. We had to depend on each other, our siblings, mm -hmm. to survive. And as I'm an adult now, and mm -hmm. I have five children that look up to me, I don't want them to have to recover from my childhood. Mm -hmm. Right. And part of doing that, it takes work. And that's why we're going to do some planting today. And we're going to talk about cultivating. Because there's no, I don't know any plant that grows overnight. <laughs> right? And we as humans are very similar. We go through a very similar process as the plants go through. Okay, and so we'll talk about that. All right. Can I also throw another thing in? Mm -hmm. It also helps our children to know us. Yes. yes. Because I, find, I found that there were things, uh, my dad uh, was a drinker and suffered from alcoholism for mm -hmm. many years. Mm -hmm. And there were things that I didn't want to share mm -hmm. because I wanted her to have a good picture of grandfather. Because mm -hmm. I love my dad and I wanted her to know, love and, and so forth, and you didn't mm -hmm. want to say, okay, you throw the baby out with the bathwater, so because of this, 
no, no, no. Right. So there were things that I had to become comfortable with mm -hmm. sharing and, sh and finding ways to share it in a way that was truthful, mm -hmm. but at the same time... Um, uh, Education. Yeah, that was truthful, that, that shared my experience, that shared what what happened in our home mm -hmm. um, and some of grandpa's weaknesses, mm -hmm. uh, but also shared my love for him. I, I, I'm trying to paint a balanced picture, picture. Mm -hmm. so she can know me better mm -hmm. um, and not just think mom's over here, right. mom is here and I connect. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. And also what it does, it also helps ch children to realize that some of the feelings and the thoughts and the experiences that they go through Okay. Mm -hmm. and, that we don't live in a perfect world. and we don't live in a perfect world. And you, could, you can have multiple ways of being in the same person and still find your, it within your heart to love that person or to say, you know what, I'm going to have to keep you at a distance. But if we only paint a rosy picture, then kids are uh, disadvantaged and deluded because now when something presents itself with its multifaceted um, experiences, they are not, they're thrown off because all they were told was this single story. And it makes it very difficult for them to reconcile angst and opposites and, and, and uh, you know, dis dissonance, right? It makes it difficult for them to understand that. Yes. I just want to say that men are particularly, find this particularly difficult. Mm -hmm. One, we, we don't talk to others, to other men, we rarely do. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be vulnerable in front of other men. Because usually when this stuff happens, it's always in the presence of a group of women, just like how we're here today, there's one, two, three, four. There's only, there are four men in this room. Mm -hmm. And you just touched on something. Your, uh, father. your father was an alcoholic. My father was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And usually I've gotten a lot better at it now, but as soon as I walk into a room, I can pick out the children of alcoholics. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain things we give off. And then when we don't, like when I, we work with, usually once a year they ask me to come down to Plainsfield in Indiana to do something about men, you know how we talk to each other. All of the men in church are silent until after the presentation is done. And then we sit at the table and then we all want to talk to each other because there's been a leveling of the playing field. But we are not intentional because we're all struggling with how can we help our own sons not have the same kind of relationship that we had with our father? We may be dry drunks, we may not drink, but we're still struggling with that thing because we, we generally don't talk about it or even acknowledge it for what it is. I just wanted to share that. Yeah. And it's interesting you brought that up. Judith was able to share that her father was an alcoholic. And it's only when she shared that you felt okay to share it. Female opening up first before the male. And he's, he opens up easily. And so, but it just, this just shows us in real time the difference in, in, in gender and some of the roles that we take on. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so think of the past, of the time long, ask your parents what happened. Tell them, ask them to tell you what happened. All right, so then this is the last one. This is from 2 Timothy 1, 3 to 7. Night and day I mention you in prayer. This is Paul talking to, I think, so people who are Bible scholars, hi with, if I'm, if I'm calling the wrong thing, let me know, Erwin. All right, I am always grateful for you as I pray to the God my ancestors and I have served with a clear conscience. We're talking about generations. So Paul and his ancestors, generational, they had, they served God, their God, with a clear conscience. Generation passing down from one generation to the next. We talked about fashion and that's cultural. Now we're talking about spirituality being passed down. Um, 
So he said to Timothy, I also, in five, I also remember the genuine faith of your mother Eunice, your grandmother Lois had the same sort of faith and I am sure you have it as well. Generational, passing down spiritual, spirituality from generation to generation. What are you doing in your homes to pass down faith? Are you conscious of it? Right? And Paul is, has even gone on to talk about make full use of the gift. And I'm believing the gift is that gift of faith. And that's when he said to him, um, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Use the gift so that you would not be a coward. You would understand that God gives you power. He gives you love and he gives you self-control. Even though you already have that gift of faith. What are we passing down? Generation. Remember, we're talking about generation to generation. What spiritual gifts? What spiritual, what's the spiritual aura in your home? Yes. Uh, I just would like to, to ask you mm -hmm. to, to cultivate the discussion because she was, uh, uh, she was talking about the situation with the son mm -hmm. uh, involving uh, counseling, mm -hmm. uh, sexuality, whatever. And I, was, I just wondering because there are some things that the gender is important, mm -hmm. even is regarding spirituality. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, when you have a family that you have the father and the, the mother, both of them are spiritual, both of them trying to teach uh, things uh, regarding spirituality, regarding uh, the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. We have a situation, but if we have, for example, only the mother, only the father, now you, you have the mother trying to take over things but that the father, father was, was right. And, and, and It gets confusing. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I'm just... I'm just uh, bring this to the discussion because sometimes we have to deal with this challenge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have a, a got divorced or mm -hmm. and we are in a situation that we are a mother, but we have to take over mm -hmm. the, the role of a father mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's challenging. And so imagine on top of being, on top of trying to be sure that what you're passing down socially and emotionally is healthy and helpful, you also now have to think about the factor that you were the only parent, whether or however you came about being the only parent, you have to now think about, am I getting the next generation ready? Am I providing the social emotional support, the spiritual support that they need? Am I making sure that I invest in the future generation now okay so you get support right so you're going to get support yeah that's that's what we're supposed to tell because for example in this situation that you were referring before i think there are some things that we uh, we need to to refer mm -hmm. get help for example. yeah get some some help one of the activities that we're going to do is going to talk about supports right a tree as a tree has branches and we equate branches with support systems, right? And we all need those. All right, so we talked, part of, the part of the title of the presentation is cultivating generational social emotional competence. So what is social emotional competence? Social emotional competence is the ability to recognize, understand, manage, express, and reflect on the social and emotional aspects of one's life in ways that enable the successful management of life tasks, such as learning, forming relationships, solving everyday problems, and adapting to the complex demands of growth and development. It's basically living, okay? It's ba what social emotional competence is, is, there's a saying that I have, is social emotional competence is like air, it's like the air we breathe. The same way we need air to live, we need social emotional competence to have healthy relationships. You cannot have uh, relationships, healthy relationships. E actually, you cannot have any kind of relationship without social emotional competence. And there are five core social emotional competencies. 
And these are the ones in, like you have in your bag. If you look in your bag, yes, right? There are five core social emotional competencies or skills. Self-awareness, self-management, relationship management, social awareness, responsible decision making. If you pull that out, it's a double sided. On one side is where you get to write in, do some activities and you should have a pen in your bag. And on the other side, it tells you it has some questions. So let's start with the self awareness, right? Because that's really where we have to start with everything. In order for us to be able to know what is passed down from generation to generation, knowing is self-awareness, right? The act of knowing is being self-aware. So one of the first questions you want to ask yourself, who am I? Who are you? That's foundational. And it's a question that a lot of people have a difficult time answering. Because you're not just one thing. You're not just one, you're not uh, unidimensional. <laughs> you're multidimensional. And people also get confused between who they are in terms of their being and related to their doing, right? So your doing is not necessarily your being. And your being is not necessarily your doing. So who you be? <laughs> who you be okay so um, uh, how much more time do I have ooh <laughs> um, in your spare time today sometime today you can complete so that I have a lot of prompt questions right I call them prompt questions that you can answer if you turn on the other side you can answer those Right, so why am I here? What am I good at? What do I like? What do I believe? In order for you to pass this down to your next generation, you have to first be aware. Like I said, you have to be conscious. You, we cannot go through life living unconsciously because then what happens is that we make the same mistakes over and over and over, and that's how things that are harmful gets passed down from generation to generation. It's not in your DNA, so don't let anybody tell you you're doing it because your grandmama did it. No. But is it a, but it's part of our brain wiring? I mean, it may not be in our DNA, but mm -hmm. our wiring, because of the conditioning that we've experienced over the years, over the generations, mm -hmm. it does have a factor. It has, oh, absolutely. Brain science says that when you, the more you think about one thing, if, if it's a negative thing, it creates grooves in your brain, right? But those, the same way the negative gets grooves, the positive also gets grooves in your brain or tracks or roads in your brain. And what we can do is we can repave that. We can re rewire our brain. But that still is not, that's why I said it's environmental, right? So trauma, when trauma occurs, our brains get rewired with healthy relationships with other factors, you know, other support factors in our environment that could be introduced later on in life can help to rewire that so that we can function adequately and successfully. But is the cognitive psychologists uh, and brain scientists are coming to realize and have come to realize that 90 to 95 percent of mental health disorders, physical ailment, ailments, uh, start here. Start in your thought life. That's the most. That's the most recent science. Is they're saying it is almost. So what percentage was earlier? You said it was environmental. So what percentage are you saying is environmental versus? Brain based or Environment is, is, I would say, 95%. That's what the science is saying. 95% is lifestyle and thought and thinking oh, patterns. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like because brother, because chemistry. It's, the, it's not necessarily the same because I could grow up 
Mm -hmm. See, my sister and I, mm -hmm. two years apart, mm -hmm. grew up in the same home, mm -hmm. but we, we may have taken away different things based on our mm -hmm. position, our birth order, based on mm -hmm. uh, the sure. intensity of certain things in our interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, rolling with that parent figure, right. um, maybe more attached, more distant. Uh -huh. sure it's, it's not just... You know, it's it's my role, my position, my interpretation. But that's all. My personality, what I bring to the right. Table. So that's environmental. That's not genetic. Resilience and and birth order, those are not genetic. Right. But how I internalize and how I make it real for me mm -hmm. and, and its impression mm -hmm. on my mental, on my mind. On your brain. Uh huh. I, I see. I saw those two as separate. So what happens in my environment doesn't necessarily mean mm -hmm. or transfer right. the same. It's not like an imprint because we grew up in the same home. Right. Home. It's going to you're going to experience the it the same, same way. way. No, absolutely not. Okay. But it's not, but I'm I'm talking about environmental as opposed to genetic. Like you're born with already born with the um, biological. Right. Thing. It's not on your DNA. It's not imprinted on your DNA, right? Environmental could be personality. It could be physiological, but not necessarily genetic. Okay. Well, I, I think environmental. I, I, I think what she's trying to say, I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, is that there is also the, the, the free will mm -hmm. acting. Mm -hmm. take, taking place because sometimes a person decides sometimes a person decides to focus on the negative aspect of something mm -hmm. and you have a same brother in the same house mm -hmm. and he trying to, to look to the bright side in mm -hmm. another direction yeah. yeah but that's 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 still not genetic not genetic that's so not that's genetic that's that's how the how we train our brains to think about something and that that comes in where you talk about personality i may have a personality that is more bent toward seeing things negatively or and we grew up in the same house or I see it more positively. That's that's personality which is also in this is also part of the whole brain science, right? Yeah. Um, I I read the I am study mm -hmm. about twins. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because one choose uh, be a person, a positive person, and the other is totally different. Mm -hmm. One has the results is the one that choose be positive, live in a place that is too much sunshine and whatever. He's a help. He's healthier, healthier than the other. The, the other one. They are twins. Mm -hmm. and I have twins. Mm -hmm. He also is has a, a twin Do brother. It. Mm -hmm. I can see my family, I can see my kids. Mm -hmm. it's, you choose. It's, it's, it's choice. All yeah. your, it's all related to your, mm -hmm. what you want to be. Mm -hmm. And and we are we are I I, I I I understand what you're asking me because there's that personality piece, right? But personality is not necessarily DNA. In yeah. yeah. never learn it she can never do these certain things so we put her in different therapies and we changed her environment and subsequently changed her reaction mm -hmm. so now she doesn't understand empathy but she can show it mm -hmm. even though she can't tell you what it is she can still mimic the emotion mm -hmm. so environment is a huge factor mm -hmm. in changing your mindset mm -hmm. It is, absolutely. It's Nadia two years ago versus Nadia now. It's different, it's different kid. person. Yeah. yeah. We changed the environment, environment. she was in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so again, when you get some spare time. And so here is uh, <laughs> seven tips. You also have this in your packet. Seven tips for cultivating a balanced social-emotional home environment. And this is in your packet. Yeah, a little brochure. And what we've done is, this is an acronym, it spells, the first letter of each word here spells markers, right? These are markers. It's, 
in the bag, Jane, in your, in your bag. Yeah, mindsets, attitude, activities, I'm sorry, relationships, can I have one? <laughs> Thanks. Um, relationships, knowledge, emotions, resources, skills, and strategies. These seven tips are what can help you create, a, cultivate a socially, emotionally um, balanced home environment. And what, what we've done is we've aligned it with plants, the whole process of cultivating. For example, number one, mindsets, which are attitudes or beliefs or viewpoints. I like the different types of soils that are used for planting different types of seeds and plants. Your mindset or your attitude toward life and relationships determines how balanced or imbalanced you are on your life's journey. Example, if you have a mindset that says that you are not important, you will move through life and relationships, allowing yourself to be treated like you don't matter. So choose mindsets that will equip and empower you to get the best out of life. Um, we could go to emotions. Tip number five, plants are sensitive to change. They're slow to adapt to new environments. So if they're, do if they're doing fine, changing the light or the height of the plant is a no-no. If you need to transfer your plant to a new location or apartment, it is suggested to ease the plant's transition by slowly allowing them to be exposed to the elements. We as humans experience multiple emotions throughout the day. It is important to understand that emotions are expressions of our thinking. So whatever you are thinking will show up in how you are feeling. Feelings have no intellect. So choose your thoughts carefully, manage your thoughts wisely, because your thoughts control your feelings and your behaviors. So you can read this at your leisure. So what I want us to do now, this is a handout. I think it's out there. To, it's in your bag. You, this is another activity you can do at another time because I want us to go and start planting. <laughs> okay, so show up for your life. What type of fruit are you? Or what type of fruit do you want to bear, right? Fruits are considered... Um, Behaviors, attitudes, act, I'm sorry, behaviors, activities, and relationships. Um, what type of roots? Roots are the foundation and care. And core, I'm sorry, core. Then we have branches. Branches are your support systems. Your support systems. And your connections. The soil. Soil are mindsets and attitudes. Seeds. Seeds are your thoughts, your values, your practices, and your customs. Again, when you have time, the, you can, you can uh, complete this on your own. Time is up. Time is up. We can't get to plant, guys. But if you're here today for lunch, we can always come back. I have the soil, I have this, you have seeds in your bags. Um, we can do that. Thank you. And hopefully as you plant your seeds, reflect on the seven tips, the social, the social emotional skills in your daily lives. And the fact that you have control over what you harvest because you can choose your seeds. All right. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> You're you. welcome. <laughs> I'm just sorry we couldn't get the plan.